Listeners, how are you? People around the world. <laughs> we uh, we got a quarterly Q and A coming up now, so we've been uh, Joshy and myself and the Old States Instagram page asked for questions, and we we hand selected some of the best best ones that came in. All uh, of them, I believe, right? Everyone. Every single one. Yeah. Every single. But only one question got vetoed. So anyone, so anyone who you've uh, completely love completely lost control of thought now. <laughs> no, don't stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. What I'm saying is, uh, because we've got a lot of stuff to get through, we'll just we'll just crack straight on into it. Um, and thankfully, we've got uh, we've got Alec Hepburn to act as question master, and all, he could also maybe have some some funny, you know, tidbits of information that he. Uh, we'll see. We'll some see. insight, maybe. There's a couple of questions with the your yeah. name on it. That one right there. We may get to that if there's time. Like you said, there's a lot of questions here. Almost two full sheets of paper. So, <laughs> <laughs> should we uh, fire right in then, lads? Please Let's get going. Right. Um, what we're going to kick things off is uh, these are all anonymous, so not sure who they came from. But if you were granted one wish to have an abundance of anything you would like, what would be? What would that be? One one wish. I'm I'm going back to my uh, my what we were talking about last week when we we're doing our like uh, recap of thirty years, and I think having abundance of presence just being able to be in the present moment at no, all times bro you can't nah, it's me I don't you know can, if you can have that one that can you can literally manifest anything you can sell position. out you, you don't have to take that position <laughs> I don't know if Any you can have that one right come on then what would you have the alchemist over here <laughs> uh, I don't know what <laughs> no what have an abundance of time Time, I suppose. That's time. a nice one, actually. I'd have an abundance of time. What, as in, like, you'd never die? No, I'd want to die eventually. But you could choose I when. actually don't really know what I mean. I wish that I could uh, dilate time. So when I was having a really good night or something like that, or a good day, Slow I could just, down. like, couldn't keep it going as long as I wanted to until I'm like, right, okay, I've had enough now, now I'll go to sleep. And no. also, I wish I could do that with no side effects. Because whenever people do things in films, there's always <laughs> side effects. And I don't want those side effects. I just want to have the time, the abundance as I see it. Maybe maybe it goes to show it's not an abundance but a moderation, Harry. What do you mean? Because <laughs> you, you both can't come up with something, but... What would you yeah. have, Al? Obviously, you are the question master, maybe. No, I'm, I'm only going to weigh in on specific ones. I'm not sure about that one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'll go time, and then we've got t abundance of good. presence. I think they're both two good ones. All yeah, right. nice. Let's go. Question, Let's start. question two. Where do you see yourself in a year's time? Joshy? I'm, well, I'm hoping in a year's time I'm going to be in your homeland in Australia. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're going to go, well, the, at the moment we're like working on launching. Is that launching, to WA? Uh, to Perth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're like working on launching in Australia. So the plan is to like head over there and, and you know, do some meet and greets, speak to the factories and all the people mm. we're going to be involved with. Good, so, good grass fed You know what you say, you... you are gonna like companies say we're gonna launch a different country. Yeah. It's just because of the shipping and stuff like that that it makes it uh, that creates issues. Why? Well, you, so you need to, you need to set up like a business in that country, a bank account in that country. Then you need to like work out yeah the, the shipping and all that sort of stuff. So mm. it's not that straightforward. But the the main issue we're having at the moment is working out like the import permits and all that sort because it's, it's animal products. That's all. So you would you would so. import it from what New Zealand? That's what I'm looking to do at the moment, yeah. I think yeah. They, they kind of share a border a little bit. Australia, for those who might not have been, uh, extremely rigorous when it comes to um, livestock. And if you're taking animals over there, even Nick White taking his dogs over there, oh, they yeah. go into quarantine. This is prior to anything. And then even when I went home, a pair of rugby boots, they were almost going to throw the boots out because it had some grass on it. 
just some dried grass. Well, what are they afraid of? I think they're afraid of just damaging the, um, I don't know, ecosystems or Maybe the flora and the fauna. I feel like they've watched like, that episode of The Simpsons. Where the bullfrogs come yeah. in. Yeah, yeah the cane toad. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. This can help I was, think, I was thinking about the bullfrogs as well. Are they worried about the... Yeah, there, there's actually a thing about cane toads. I, I don't know if that episode was based on that. What is a cane toad? Cane toad. It's like a... It's, it's, <laughs> it's a frog. It's a toad. Is it like a, like a similar to a bullfrog then? I don't really know, really. They're up north. I think they're just big. What do you mean, one? There's like billions of them. Near on. No, I don't know how many. But yeah, that was... Um, so Australia is quite tough about those it, That's why I think we're going to have to do it for New Zealand. That's why it's, the way it's looking at the moment is we're going to have to do it like that, but yeah. we'll see. What about you, H? Year's time? Uh, I'm not really too sure, to be honest. Just enjoying my life, hopefully. I know that's a really vague, quite like cringe answer. You reckon Lions? Uh, Leicester Lions? <laughs> 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 yeah, hopefully still holding down, you know, earning a bob or two, mate. You know. Hopefully everything's it will be fine. Still playing rugby, Almost not planning retirement. Playing, not anytime. playing Touchwood, Touchwood, no, nothing like that, nothing like that. Alright, keep still locking down. The land anchor. No, no. Do you, do you <laughs> elaborate? You, <laughs> know that, you know that from university, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah of, of course, course he knows. Yeah, of course yeah. he knows that. Like he was, you know, he was, he was, well, you know, he was the one who used to call me in quite <laughs> regularly. Um, question three. <laughs> this is more Josh. Um, tailored where do you see ape in a year's time I guess that was kind of a little bit like the last question yeah same thing so like launching Australia's big project we got on at the moment we're like just expanding that nose tail line people mm. people loving the the organs and the new the, product the, coming the, out I right hear the testicles yeah they don't tomorrow. have to actually wait years time for that they don't yeah tomorrow tomorrow we're already they're already on pre-sale if anyone's interested they're out now what does pre-sale mean when just, it first arrives, you get it sent out. Yeah, we just do a thing for anyone who's on the email list. We send them out so they can buy it cheaper before like anyone else can get their hands on you it. Must, have you pl- you've plugged it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we've been plugging it. Plugging of course. It for the last do, you, few weeks. do you think that the liver king's kind of stealing your shine a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> what, well, eating raw testicles? Here. Yeah, but he's sort of showing you up a little bit. He's got thicker abs as well. Mate, he's been they've been they've been at it for a long while. I'm just I'm just greasing the groove at the moment. Mm. I'm getting getting my handle on the Instagram game and have you ever, I'm coming for it. Have you ever mm. eaten it? Because he eats it like a pear. Yeah. Yeah, testicle. Yeah, testicle. I've yeah. never I've never eaten a, a testicle, no. Before. If any of our listeners oh, haven't like seen a guy called Liver King. <laughs> liver King here. <laughs> Hello Primals, Liver King here. <laughs> got a real treat for you today. I got some raw ox testicle. What? <laughs> that isn't a treat, is it? Like, well, it's on. for him, apparently. Mm. No, it isn't, man. I, t- I actually, do you know what? I saw him, I was watching a video of Liver King, and I seen him eat that raw testicle, and I saw him wincing when he chewed into it, and I was like, <laughs> you're not fooling me, brother. He What's is- his name, Brian? Brian. I'm not sure what his name is. Did it look like it popped in his mouth? No. Ooh. It like, had the consistency of, like, it's actually making my, my balls... Uh, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> he, he, to be fair to the Liver King, he's in incredible shape. We've got to oh, yeah, Jesus pay him Christ. his dues there, Harry. But, but, mate, so, I've given him all the dues, mate. I've, all the dues. For people Just, that don't know, we're talking about a guy who runs a company like sort of similar to Ape in the US called Ancestral Supplements. Uh, mm. But he's like taking the whole ancestral living thing to the extreme. And uh, he's eating testicles on raw testicles on camera and doing other things. Yeah, so for his it's worth checking out. To be fair, yeah, for yeah. his for his fun sort of downtime, he actually throws spears into a tree. Doesn't doesn't watch Netflix. Quite fun. Doesn't no pornographies. Just you know, outside <laughs> throwing a javelin into a tree. Fair play. Uh, um, well, was that leave us to uh, question four? Uh, <laughs> Where do you see the world in a year's time? These could all be from the same person. They're, they're very curious where, where things are heading in the next year. The world, a bit more uh, larger Mate. in scale than Ape. Yeah, a lot more. Uh, I think, I, I really feel that my belief on all this, and I, I've kind of pitched this from Charles Einstein, because over the last couple of years, I've kind of, I've been through ups and downs with like where I think the world's going. I've been- Relative to Albert? Huh? No, no. Well, no relatives as far as I'm Oh right, Charles Einstein. <laughs> yeah, um, and he he basically he's like uh, economist, and he the, his theory is that like the the consciousness of the planet is raising, and that for that to happen, like the structures that are in place at the moment were built from an old consciousness, and they mm. need to kind of fall and be rebuilt, mm. and obviously that's going to be kind of like a, a very long and 
painful process and he believes that's what we're going but ultimately through right a now. positive process but ultimately Shows. a positive mm. process yeah because the the vibration of the planet is going to raise ultimately so uh, my belief i'm i'm in congruence with him I, I think he's hit the nail on the head with that and i reckon it might get worse before it gets better but i think it's going in a good direction ultimately mm. i think specifically um because obviously you deal <clears throat> in supplementation but the last year, and I guess the last year would be a precursor to the year to come, has had a big focus on healthy living, healthy eating, healthy lifestyles. And there's a few more questions about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I could only imagine maybe the trend is shifting a little bit more towards that, sort of a little more internally about what you're doing and stuff like that. Well, 100%. You know, what you're eating and it was like the kind of the, the beginning of lockdown was our break as a company where like things started really rolling for us mm. uh, and you could see that you know we, we just saw it in website views and sales and stuff people coming a lot more conscious of their health yeah people engaging asking questions asking you know starting to realize how to raise their immunity through what they're eating holistic lifestyle practices all this sort of stuff it's been cool to watch yeah brilliant one of the i actually think that if the if people's consciousness were, were to rise you'd see a difference it wouldn't be like a hallelujah moment where, oh, you know, I, I see the light, but maybe it, people just, their minds just switch to doing things like in a more conscious fashion. And it actually is quite a subtle change. And it, but then if you look at it over like a, a grander scale, you see a lot more people like, oh yeah, the tide is turning and maybe people are looking at other things. And that's just from, you know, like, what is it? Like millions and millions of 1% changes adding up mm. to, a, you know, huge, huge changes yeah. well also if it wasn't for this disruption a lot of this change probably wouldn't have come about also yeah, exactly so I guess it, in one way um, this disruption you could argue has been a good catalyst for people to reevaluate how they live yeah, 100% man like people read it like just from interacting with some of the people I have online just saying like how they've been able to read exercise more like reconnect with some of their passions mm. blessing the skies brilliant definitely how you spent it uh, what's that What's that? Oh, I thought I had I noise going so on. Technical difficulty. All right, uh, just because another one about the world, so we, I might just divert away from the world for a moment and go to something else. Uh, if you could travel back in time to any point in your life so far, yeah. what advice oh, would you right. give yourself at that point considering what you've learned and the experiences you have had in the years since? I don't really know what, when. Like, Should we put an age on it? Like. 15, 18? Well, my, young, my, young, I, young go back, I go back to year seven disco. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tell myself not to, not to do the worm <laughs> when, there was a big, when there was a big dance circle. Because that was... Well, to I'm, this day, it makes, it's making my eyes <laughs> worn out thinking about it. I can't... Obviously, it must have been quite the hit with the ladies after that worm, eh? No, it wasn't. It was. It was honestly. It was like some sort of woman repellent. <laughs> I'd just been let off. I may as well have let off a stink bomb in the middle of the dance floor. And also, do you remember? Um, I'm imagining more of a belly flop than a worm. It was. Was it? Yeah. It was. It was. It, was, it certainly wasn't graceful. Dusty tox. Yeah, but it was. It was. Du it was no, dusty. Do you remember sports? Sports. Your sports hall floors yeah, are covered yeah. in dust. And I got back in the car af afterwards, and my uh, my old man was sat in the front, and he was like. <laughs> turn around I was like covered in dust and he was like well, I told you to sort of take it easy that was his advice going in he was like just take it easy and I don't do anything crazy were you in a suit? no I wasn't in a suit it's in American pie I was wearing like <laughs> I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt I actually had a friend of mine go to the disco and he brought a <laughs> he brought <laughs> he brought a, a pad to write all the girls numbers he was oh, going to get no. down in there were no numbers written on that. Was it a large sure pad you he brought? Yeah, was it, was, yeah, how it was ambitious a, it was A4. Was A4. <laughs> A4. <laughs> Props like, to the ambition, you must say. Yeah, it was, yeah. But to be fair to me, uh, yeah, nothing happened that night, though. But that's why I would... I would it still, to this day, kind of so let, haunts let's, me a little bit. So your, your life experiences... And also, if you just took the advice of your dad uh, originally, was just to take it easy. Yeah, if I'd taken it easy then, who knows where I'd be now? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Josh? Uh, a little bit more like serious than your one, but mine probably be when I was like 18, when I didn't go, uh, when I kind of like left Gloucester and went to Loughborough Uni. And I thought the world was ending for me then because I'd like been released from Glo Gloucester. Uh, I did terribly at my A-levels 
and I went to like Loughborough College and I just thought I fucked everything up but it like just the advice I'd give myself is like everything just works out like just well, have stressed you out just it? To, yeah stressed me out at that age fucking hell I took it so mm. seriously just a quick question uh, Gapy how um how did they break it to you that you weren't getting uh, a contract an old Spanish archer I I can't remember for sure I feel I feel like they just told that like everyone that got one or something got a letter and then you just kind of realised that you didn't have a letter sort of thing. No letter, no news I think was, was actually bad news. No news situation. was bad news, yeah. You could shed a light on being dropped from several yeah, academies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of experience. Was it the Harlequin one? Or the no, the, no, it was no Harlequin. No, no, been more Was it the London, London Irish, Irish one? London Irish, yeah. yeah. That was quite yeah, that was, the episode you left, didn't you? Was it was quite the episode. I was only a young boy. I was 13 years old. I was you know, heartbroken. <laughs> Think about this, right? Think about this. <laughs> We're sat in the gym. You're like waiting in this in the sort of purgatory waiting room, you know, of hell. And you're getting and the coach is outside in the room next room. They tell you whether you're in or out. And then you go through like the next set of doors. Either you know you're in the EPDG or you're up Shit's Creek. And I goes up Shit's Creek. It was horrible. They kind of gave me a bit of a character assassination too. I had quite a few of these negative, but character building though, definitely character building. I still remember those coaches. Was that the same one you did? That was a no, that was, sorry, that was sorry. That you, was. Did, you did swear at someone, didn't you? That when was you a, sorry, I did swear. Yeah, I thought I was like the hardest bloke. <laughs> hardest bloke in Sussex. That you day, did go to a judo class prior to that though. Oh yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, orange belt judo. <laughs> was it orange belt? Yeah, judo. You did tell me you slayed a bully as well at judo. No, I never that? told you I slayed a... <laughs> <laughs> Gone out me for all these stories that I've <laughs> Oh no, I'm only joking. Um Right, let's uh let's keep keep it moving, shall we? Um Do you believe in star signs and do you think people embody the characteristic traits of their star signs? I don't know enough about star signs really to know. I don't know a massive about about yeah. star signs, but Right, first of all, I think like what's in the newspaper, you know, the, the what's Majestic that section? Meg. Mystic Meg. Mystic Meg, Mystic yeah. Meg, I yeah. think that's a load of bollocks, but <laughs> Izzy's done a course on, um, oh, what's it called? It'll come to me in a second. Gene Keys, it's called Gene Keys, and it's like astrology, but like made into like kind of like a science, and it's creepy in it. You, She's done your one. It is creepy how bang on it is with all really? the stuff. Yeah, like every single person she's done it for, They've just like sort of read it like what the fuck? How is this? So I'm happy? fairly specific as well. It's not. Yeah. They're not. They're not because the ones in the newspaper are incredibly vague. Yeah. Well, if the star signs are so accurate, would would that lead you to believe then your fate's already determined? Yeah. Mm. So we've actually discussed this before on we, the pod. Like, yeah, briefly oh, okay. on, on the pod before. I think my answer is kind of <laughs> <laughs> emphatically kind <Yeah>. of <laughs> definitely kind of yeah um. <laughs> what about you how you believe in star signs yeah yeah definitely um i don't i i would uh implore implore is that a word yeah like encourage i'd encourage you to get ask Izzy to do yours like when you when she does them they are they're very it's very cool when she does them and it's a bit more in depth i think it is quite an in-depth thing but we are ultimately you know we are f we are created from the stars. Well, what's a characteristic or two that your star sign holds, as it was just your birthday? I can't remember. Do you mean like the ones that Izzy did, or the or Libra? Just Libra in general. Libra's the scales. Okay. I don't know. I suppose I suppose balanced. You don't you don't know what Libras are? Not really. Reputation? No, like they're quite uh, like mild mannered. Quite harmless people. <laughs> Quite harmless little men for the Libras. <laughs> there's, I think there's a few different they, things to it. Like yeah, there's few, I, think, I don't think it's as... That's what I mean. That's, you know, what that's, Josh, that's it's not, not as clear newspaper, cut. am I? You'll be more newspaper. Yeah, 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 but the newspaper Megan is so vague, that. anyone could say, it's like, oh, you're going to experience something good and bad this Ooh, week. Oh, that's nice, yeah. That's the kind of thing a newspaper would say, whereas Izzy's ones are... It's all about your, your Scorpio rising and then your Pisces moon and then your Libra on the river. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, what are you, Alec? I'm an Aries. Now, do you believe in star signs? Yeah, I've got a star sign. I know what, what is stars. Is Aries what the fish? Um, where the ram. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know where star signs come from? The constellations. Yeah. But do you know how they came about? Ancient wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where did they? Well, where did they come out from? I thought you would have known this. I thought you read. Oh, the, from Zeitgeist. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say Graham Hancock's book. <laughs> oh right. No, I never read that. It's too. It's a big book. It's just fingerprints of the gods. Yeah, it's about. 26,000 year cycle and the procession, oh, yeah, 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 the procession of the there. equinox yeah which is about what's a, the house of zodiac so each house is about 2,000 years yeah two and a bit thousand years 12 of them get you up to 26,000 and what did it recently so, we recently went into the age of Aquarius didn't we was that the Mayan calendar one yeah that's why a lot of people in 2012 thought it was the end of the world but it was just the end of that house so as the earth wobbles wherever the camera is as it wobbles and it slightly moves the constellation from what we see and then so over the course of thousands of years it moves from one house to another house yeah and uh the north yeah, star so always stays moved, in the same spot yeah very peculiar why that is <laughs> wherever you are on the earth it yeah. stays in the same spot um yeah star, very interesting stuff star signs uh if we uh what's what we got next here uh if nine to f- i don't know if this is specific um maybe to you Josh because you used to have a 9 to 5 if 9 to 5 office brings you down but have no work dream where do you go from there um is that yeah yeah, yeah. I can uh, so like what I'd recommend to anyone is like well it's one of Paul Check's sayings but he says like if you don't have a if you don't have a dream you're like you're making space for a nightmare basically um, so like mm. I think it's important for everyone to like connect with that and like follow their dream in, in some way shape or form but if people don't know what their dream is, that's basically where I was before I started A. Yeah. And the thing that helped me massively was like we traveled and I know everyone doesn't have that luxury to be able to take time off, but just giving myself space and stepping away from like what I was doing day to day and like giving myself time to relax. And then my mind, I just followed my mind, like where my curiosities, you know, where it led me. Yeah. And then I ended up coming up with this idea and like forming the company. So I just advise people like, you know, if getting away for six months isn't feasible, which I realise probably isn't for the vast majority of people, like create space in any way you can and like set an intention to like work out what your dream mm. is, you know, actively try and work it out as opposed to just watching life go by and and realising, you know, you're not following your dream. I don't, I don't think you need the home run from the get go. Um, because it's quite hard to sit there maybe at night if this is someone specific sit there on the couch and think what's my dream and I need to know what it is to pursue it yeah, yeah. it can I kind of took the approach um, it was the old light bulb you know a thousand different ways how not to get a light bulb to work um, so what's that I, light bulb it, it was uh, Thomas Edison and he was basically he said I didn't fail I found a thousand different ways how not to make oh, a light yeah, bulb work yeah. and I kind of think that's a, good, a nice little approach a thousand different jobs you don't want you know you can just sort of bounce through like um done a few uh work experiences and you're like yeah that's good mm, don't know if it's for me try something else don't yeah. know if it's for me try something else you can just keep going through i don't think you need to sit there and be like i need to know what the dream is come come sun up yeah because agree. because i um and probably what you're saying have a little bit of space I let it form naturally. So may, maybe for whoever this might be, just, um, I don't know, dip your toe in a different area. And also you said it on the last one, or the last time it was just you and I speaking, was that you don't ever hear, I, I personally haven't, if someone takes a risk and does something and follows the passion and follows a dream, something they're interested in, a change, you never, like, I don't think I've ever heard it with people say, oh, I'm really, I really regret doing that. I should yeah, have stayed yeah. doing the thing that I wasn't happy doing. Yeah. But I hear I've I have heard of plenty of people who've been doing something like I'm doing this for twenty twenty five years and it's shit and I don't like it I'm doing yeah. it because I want to support the family yeah. mm. which is which is very noble and and and, and there are people that need you know if that's what you want to do then then do it but if you feel like it you something you need to change then change it yeah. and it will work out mm. you know as, as if you think if you think positive and it's sort of and I think just to, you know. But also, you, you take a risk. Whatever this nine to five is, you know that doesn't have to be the direct thing you change. You can change something within yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can affect the way you look at work after that. And then, if that's still having a negative effect, then you can maybe explore other avenues. Because uh, whoever this might be, we don't need them to pack in their job straight away. With. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, don't just well, like you know, thing you can walking pick. out one of those cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the- <laughs> you can like pick stuff up in your spare time like what, when what you said a minute ago reminded me of the Steve, like the Steve Jobs story where he 
basically dropped out of uni or whatever course he was doing and, and picked up loads of random modules and he was doing like calligraphy and a few other bits that at the time seemed really random but obviously gave him the skills to start Apple. Yeah. So yeah, I think just follow, create space, find out, connect with what you're passionate about and then just explore it like you said. Yeah. Acquire tools, I guess. Really. Exactly. Um, maybe this uh, could be a little bit related uh, or we can expand it. What's your experience moving away from toxic activities? So I guess yours would maybe, first and foremost, maybe your work, but obviously a lot of bad habits and bad traits out there and um, any any experiences of moving away from toxic habits? I suppose Ex- my- Activities, sorry, activities. My two, like the two that spring to mind, uh, one was alcohol. So like when I was working in the city, I was like going out boozing all the time and well on the weekends and I wasn't it wasn't congruent with what I wanted to be doing in my life so I was I was enjoying it at the time but then I'd kind of berate myself in the week feeling unhealthy and all that sort of stuff and that was really easy to step away from because I just kind of went cold turkey with it I just cut it off and it was the same with when I decided I wanted to start eating really healthy I just wouldn't buy any bad food so they were really easy transitions for me but then a toxic activity that I still do now which I'm not which I find hard to let go of is just the amount I'm on my phone. Yeah, and I think that's because it's it's not I'm not able to just cut it out <clears> in that same way. Uh, but tips I have for I suppose doing things like that is just make it easy for yourself to not do the toxic activity. So with my phone, I've given this example before. When I'm working, I like if I don't if I'm not expecting a call or anything, I'll just put it on silent and put it behind me. Yeah, and it's like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Just little things like that help. With, with the phone, um, something that I changed fairly recently, which has actually has paid massive dividends, is just leaving my phone out of the room when I used to go to bed with it. Because I used to, so I'll set, I need to set my alarm on it, so I need to have it in the room. And I get back and inevitably like be on there and um, my girlfriend's having a shower or whatever, getting in bed, I'm just like checking, stuff like that kind of thing. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it outside the room, read a book. And it kind of feels quite nice because it, it, the phone is, it's, very expedient to have a phone and it can make things very easy but it is nice to have that separation from it I think because we are glue it's they're, they're really addictive man like super addictive and oh. it, it's nice you used to use the same thing when you said where you, where you used to come into the club and you'd leave it in the car, the car yeah. and you just feel because it's not there the temptation isn't there yeah. of just the convenience of having it so you feel like oh, I'm going to speak to this person you just, it's, it's nice to get, to get away mm. from it despite how expedient they are I think, I think the removal of temptation is a lot easier than finding temptation so if mm. you're if your phone's there, um, I either leave it on airplane mode or I'll leave it in my car when I go to the club. Um, not perfect with it, sometimes I don't, but I try to. But you can you can feel there's, when it's there, it's kind of like burning a hole in your bag mm. when you've got 20 minutes downtime, which seems rare at the moment when we're, when we're training. But you know, if you go a bit of physio and it's always sitting there, um, whereas if you leave it away, or in fact, even just having it on airplane mode, then you're not actually getting any yeah. updates and so I kind of decompress at the end of the day and I'll probably have a coffee and I'll just like turn off the airplane mode and see what's going on but uh, I'd actually only because this is very easy to isolate something which is toxic but there's a lot of good things which are also uh, you could say uh, very addictive that can have knock on effects I saw this uh, um, take like a surfer for example Laird Hamilton I was listening to a podcast where he he surfs every morning and every, every evening, and it has a knock on effect with like the people around him. Positive so, or, or negative? Yeah, but it's a, it's a positive thing. There was there was this uh, basically this um, it was like twenty short films about the ocean. So there was people who had like hobbies surfing, hobbies sailing, doing all these things. Yeah. But there were addictions, and they acquired a lot of time, which took them away from people. But since just like you know, we could be addicted for playing sport yeah, yeah, yeah you view it as a good thing so you don't see it as a toxic thing but it's definitely something you'd have to grapple with one day does that make sense i know what you it's, mean it's kind of like sneaks under the radar because you can see what's bad because you're like oh that's bad for you yeah, yeah but yeah. then a lot of something you really like actually just because it's not deemed bad when you have to let go of that this can be uh i, I quite heard a, uh, quite a lot more i heard dorian yates talk about this when he was when he became Mr. Olympia, he obviously from the outside, everyone looking in and seeing that thinks he's he's done this amazing achievement. But 
it caused him to divorce from his wife because he was just so one track minded. I think, yeah, okay. And it's know. crazy way because you've got something there where he's, he's had this like um, incredible, you know, he's made this incredible achievement, but at the same time, he's been so focused on that, the rest of his mm. life's just fallen away. Yeah, well, that's I think that's kind of what it is is because it's very easy to identify what people deem as bad. But what people deem as a good thing is also something that can still cause you problems. Maybe it's when you get some kind of dependency on it. Yeah. So say when because lads say when they finish playing, don't they? They miss playing. You're yeah. playing, yeah. You know the the rush and the feeling of going out there and and putting and putting in and then having a time off. It's very it's a very very cathartic feeling to have that competitive element taken away. Maybe because you can't it, you you it, take, it will take you a lot longer to return to baseline. I can imagine. Mm. But it's a, it's a tough one, man. Like, I always feel for retiring players because ultimately, you can talk to this many people, and there's and there's a load of other people that have been through similar experiences. You be only you are going through that at that moment in time. Yeah. So ultimately, it's kind of up to you to, I suppose, like get yourself together. Which is, it's incredibly empowering, but I imagine incredibly daunting as well. Mm. Um, the there's another question which is quite similar. Maybe you could just like caveat it. It says, uh, breaking bad habits and creating good ones. So we talked a lot about breaking bad habits in a way or moving away from toxic activities. Uh, any just quick things on creating good ones? Which are Yeah, creating good habits. So it's the same thing as, as breaking bad habits in terms of just making it easy for yourself. So say, for example, I don't know. You, so this week, I, I redid my nutrition plan to make sure I was getting all my micronutrients in. Mm. There's a few things that I was lacking on so I ordered either foods or a couple supplements to fill those. I just chuck them on my desk. There's no forgetting now. Or if someone, you know, I know people that will put like a chart on their fridge and just tick off, you know, yeah. I've done this every day. So just make it really easy for yourself. Put reminders in the Structuring or organization? Because ultimately like a lot of people would want to do something, but they, they probably, they're saying creating good habits. So um, my a thing I used was like a calendar where I could, tick off things I've taken on yeah, that day yeah, for yeah. supplements wise yeah. so, I don't know is it because um, yeah is it, so would that be down to organisation or you know some people do the night before they like write down a list what they want to do the next day yeah um, yeah well it's, it's, it's down to exactly it's down to organisation and uh, and also just taking the time to I suppose think like really think it through so for that for me that was nutrition I don't know what yours was but taking that time to decide right I'm going to make this change these are the steps to get me to that change mm. and then writing it down on paper it's like bringing it into the real world and then sticking it that somewhere where it's a constant reminder to you then and it so makes it hard to fuck up mm. you know? and sometimes yeah. it isn't uh, Elliot Hulse said I don't know if anyone here watched Elliot Hulse said like um, discipline trumps motivation and you're not always going to be motivated to do the stuff sometimes you, it's going to be a drag and you can't be fucked and you just want to not do it you want to eat shit food or go to bed or you know this kind of stuff and I think that's probably something that is not really in sync with I suppose like a modern way of thinking where you got to do things that you don't particularly enjoy just over and until eventually you probably start not minding them so much yeah well it becomes then it becomes routine right and yeah and then it's just not even habit mm. Yeah, is it 30 days or something? Or there, there's a number that people throw out for Yeah, I a, think you might be right on is that. Is there something you know, like 30 that? 30 days. Um, there you go, trying for that. Uh, will, question 10, will cold showers have the same impact as cold water submerging? Uh, not exactly. So if you're having a cold shower, obviously you get, you're going to get the thermogenic effects. Actually, something really interesting, I learned on this this week, all right? So... There's a lot of people will say benefits of cold showers. It'll turn, uh, like it'll turn your fat into brown fat, which is like a easier fat to shift. Okay. Uh, but that's only through the shivering. So if you get in the cold shower and you're like shivering, yeah, that'll make that fat switch. But if you get in the cold shower and you calm yourself, you control your breath like Wim Hof style. Yeah. That's the using the cold shower to be able to overcome your reptilian brain. So it's using the same tool in two different ways, depending on how you how you respond for two different outcomes. But when you're if you if you submerge, I assume the submerge is like outdoors, right? It doesn't really say. I think that mm. that, that that is a big difference, isn't it? If it's chlorinated water or out in a river or the sea, there's a big difference there. Yeah, well, you get the if you're out and about, you get the ground effect of it as well, which is 
you, we hold an energetic frequency of ions as human beings, so does the Earth. And by interacting with technology, we throw that out of balance. We're reconnecting with the Earth, whether it be you know getting in the river, touching our feet to the floor, it'll mm. rebalance that energetic charge. And that decreases stress, that decreases inflammation in the body. So if you're outdoors doing it, that's the additional benefit you'll get than yeah. just doing it in your shower or whatever. I yeah. reckon it's better to, if you if you have ac easy access to water, submerge, submergence is better. Go to time a good frame start on the submergence though? Because you've been doing a challenge, haven't you? Or are you challenging yourself? Yeah, we did, well, we did it, we ran a challenge this month. So the challenge was each week just increasing it a bit. So 30 seconds, we yeah. won minute 90 seconds and then finishing with two minutes but it all depends on the time of year like in the you know in the summer you can easily be in the water for yeah 10 20 hour. minutes yeah, you know, yeah. half an hour whereas now it's starting to get a bit colder and come february it's tough to stay in for a couple of minutes yeah so it depends how cold the river the especially the fresh water is yeah. ridiculously cold yeah but i almost think it's better like that they don't the feeling of oh you'll be shivering all right after no, you'll be shivering. That, that when you go in when you go in and it makes your skin all you know when you go in and it makes your skin all pink yeah yeah, yeah. that's the best one but then, <laughs> but then it's the feeling of, of going in and then getting out and getting warm again and getting in your car having mm. a nice thermos oh yeah. how good does that sound yeah. See, that sounds roll fun roll on February eh yeah exactly yeah. roll on February I like these seasonal changes in the UK <laughs> yeah. have you been going you too uh, yes. <laughs> no, I. I we going to some chlorinated water, haven't we, Harry? No, I don't. I don't do the chlorinated water. No, we like the saunas. Yeah. The, the saunas the in thing in the minute. You know that. So yeah. Either sauna, physical activity, or cold. Those are your we'll three. Get, the three pillars by which good health is held upon. Mm. Obviously, on top of nutrition, Joshy. Mm. Movement. What, what about sauna? Why is sauna so good, Harry? Because it's <laughs> fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> is it because I don't? Know, I think. And obviously you can be like a pedantic and oh well you know I think anything that makes you sweat yeah. that isn't like you know don't put your hand on a hot pan or like just getting your genitals mutilated <laughs> yeah. sort of get, like activity make you sweat. sauna lifting all this stuff this stuff that makes you sweat out of you know is is good the I stress think, is good for your body they did a um, <laughs> they did a study I think it was in the Nordic states because I think a sauna is a lot more uh, a part oh, of yeah. their culture a huge part of the yeah, culture yeah but they, they had a lot better cardiac health because plain and simply because in a sauna is more or less the equivalent of sitting on a bike yeah so they'd be in a sauna for 20-30 minutes not only is there a lot of other health benefits um, but the, what, the one the study was targeting was cardiac health and that uh, they even said if, if if there's people disabled and they can't exercise the best thing you can do is get them in a sauna because actually the heart rate is given up yeah. uh, I don't know whatever 100 120 beats per minute while they'd be getting on a pretty brisk walk or a or bike so um, yeah it's just to your point Harry it's like you're just sweating out toxins right like all yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. in your system and then one of the things which is probably the cardiac health stuff is you release heat shock proteins yeah that was which is what yeah. you release when you it's the same thing that happens when you exercise but like you said it's great for elderly the sauna is great for anyone and everyone but for like elderly people people that are less able to exercise it's mm. yeah it's great is great it cold shock proteins ooh I don't know to be honest if they, if that's the term but yeah it, ha it has the same in terms of uh there's the effect of the cold water is it, ba it basically has like a bounce back effect on the body so it's like a, a stressor in that it makes so a lower immunity immediately after but then your immunity level will bounce back to higher than it was originally when you went mm. into mm. the water okay. How, what, what sort of time frame would that be uh, i think it's i think it's pretty you know right, quick yeah. after you're yeah. out yeah all right um I guess that covers a little bit of that one. Uh, on to the good stuff here, guys. <laughs> Evening meal to go to. No. <laughs> Thoughts on crypto. Harry, you're quite the crypto, uh, crypto. investor. Crypto king, you dubbed yourself. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like crypto, yeah. What about it do you like? It says thoughts on crypto. Um, what do you like? I like, about it, I like is the fact that it is decentralized in nature, of course. All of them? Not all of them, no. Your altcoins, alternative coins, that is. Uh, <laughs> those are the ones that I like the most. You know, I've got my own portfolio of investments. <laughs> <laughs> what I do tend you mean to the alt, alt coins are uh, decentralized? Is Bitcoin not 
or is that not coins? Is that classified? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm a complete crypto. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm not. I'm only joking around, brother. I'll, uh, Do you want to take it from here, This is. <laughs> uh, I believe, if I'm right, Bitcoin is not fungible. So when when you're looking at money, because Bitcoin, well, it's a currency, but when you're looking at properties of currency or money, you need it to be divisible, which Bitcoin obviously is. Um, it needs to be a unit of account. It needs to be uh, portable, which it is. Um, but the one thing it doesn't really have is fungibility, which means you can change each token for uh, another token and it doesn't matter. So when you go to a shop, you give them a 20 pound note, they'll give you any 20 pound note back. Yeah. Or the bank. It doesn't have to be the one you gave them. Whereas um, Bitcoin doesn't really have that fungibility. So you can actually follow each coin, which makes it, um, I guess, a dream of, um, you know, HMRC or or IRS or wherever you are where they can uh, track transaction and I, I guess a lot of people want anonymity uh, and privacy when it comes to money. Oh, and so the altcoins that sit outside Bitcoin, there no, is old, that anim- Altcoin is just a term for like the alternative coins. Yeah, but, but those yeah. ones are untrackable. Uh, no, not necessarily all of them. Some, some of them are, some of okay. them aren't. It's, it's, it's uh, I mean, there's thousands of them, so geez, I So mean. you don't deal in Bitcoin then, I'm guessing? the fifth no uh, <laughs> no it's um i mean i think i think what bitcoin is is obviously it's a breakthrough in um a thought process you know people view bitcoin well it's a currency but they they're starting to understand the properties of currency so dilution you know obviously then leads to um uh the the currency holding less value so I saw someone make the joke about the US dollar, which has kind of the um, world reserve currency. And someone put it in um, cryptocurrency terms. They said, oh, look at this coin. It's got X amount of trillions of tokens, outstanding, blah, blah, blah. And so you, you're, seeing, you're seeing people actually uh, view our currencies, you know, the British pound, the US dollar in terms of value compared to Bitcoins. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Rather than having value themselves as yeah. being the pound or the dollar. Yeah, because obviously, um, currencies. What we see, they've always they've always got the um, they've always kind of got the backing of authority. You know that that's the the the, the status quo, if you will. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're always there, no matter what. But when you're actually comparing, I guess, apples to apples, you're like, how does this still have? relative value considering it gets devalued so much you know each time you print a, a billion pounds or a trillion pounds you buy that much less you know um that pound goes out much uh shorter than uh, it would before and hence henceforth also you know people talk about inflation you know housing prices and stuff like that well the houses are just the same they're still brick and mortar it's actually the measuring stick which is differing mm. and the measuring stick is the currency so if you don't have an honest measuring stick you'll never get an honest right deri- an honest derived value yeah because how can you price something if the if it changes if the clock is 55 minutes to an hour and then 100 minutes the next hour you can never have consistency and you need consistency you need it you need consistency so with the altcoins and bitcoins are there a set number of coins and that's that some of them are some of them aren't uh yes bitcoin and others there are uh the majority do have a cap and that that's also another point to the meme which i didn't really finish off was the us dollar and the british pound don't have a cap yeah to how much they'll spend so yeah. a lot of people talk about bitcoin and uh i'm no expert or anything like that but the, they'll talk about oh there's only 21 million um, supply and so they're already understanding the the relationship between the supply of the money and the value of the money so the 21 million supply of bitcoin is at the moment deriving a 50 grand value whereas when you've got god knows like 10 trillion pounds outstanding you're starting to see one british pound is actually buying you no, well, what? Not even half a dozen eggs. And and the fact that you know more of the pound can be like printed at any one time. Yeah, and I, your your best examples you'll see of excessive money printing or currency printing would probably, as of late, be a Venezuela, where they saw you know hundreds of thousands of percent rise in everyday goods. Um, 
another one would be Zimbabwe. There was a, I think there was an article where they were printing the money in Germany in terms of the physical currency supply. Um, you know, don't hold me to this, but I thought I read it somewhere. And by the time it arrived in Zimbabwe, it already lost its value. There's well, nothing so that's worth, worth zero. Yeah, cause, and then again, if you saw like the Weimar Republic, that you'd have wheelbarrows <laughs> of currency, which would might, might maybe buy a life, loaf of bread. It got it got so uh, worthless. So the excessive money supply and the excessive printing creation of money it got so worthless it was more valuable to burn it was more valuable to use as an energy source as a heat source and how did they buy money. like you know bottles of milk and that? Yeah, imagine being well, a shopkeeper and someone like you got a line of people oh, with supposed well, to do this. wheelbarrows Can't all this. well it's interesting because <laughs> they didn't really uh they, they would have probably gone into alternative forms of money. So the looting would have already started way before yeah. you had that wheelbarrow full of cash, wouldn't it? Barter, that's another thing. People would probably yeah. re resorted back to or reverted back to barter. You give me a milk, I'll I give you- I've got a pig here, what have you got? Yeah, but that's a very inefficient way of- um, Yeah, that's why you need that. But that's what I feel about exchange. this, about the crypto. Obviously I'm a, a layman, definitely, but it feels exciting. And yeah, everyone's got a horse exciting. in a race and everyone's kind of discussing it. For yeah. example, like, friend Kaifer, you guys know Kaifer tried to get, I think he wanted to make a personalized coin that we were going to invest in on a, on a, on a website called poochain.app. Yeah, I've heard him talk about Which this. is the Kaifer coin. <laughs> the Laxton thing I don't get coin. about it, well, well the thing that, that confuses me, anytime I've gone to dip my toe in the crypto water, I reach out to everyone I know who has, you know, who's got investments here and there and everyone gives me completely different advice and it always like scares me, it scares me away, you know. I think, I think, I think what it does more than anything, uh, doesn't have, you know, it could be alternative coins or Bitcoin itself. All it does is offer an alternative as a medium of exchange because if you, if at any point you feel like the British pound is becoming more and more worthless because there's more and more in existence, you might then choose to, I guess, use a different medium of exchange or in fact, um, use it as a store of value. Because if you had a 50 grand in the bank and you're seeing how inflation is eroding that away, you might say, you know what, I'd rather put it in this alternative currency. Yeah, yeah. Because at least that alternative currency may, because there's no promises, but it may hold its value better than um, a pound sterling. Well, you could see it as well massively rise because if everyone has that same thought and lots of people start switching over, then but does any, it, any of the early adopters. Is it really rising though? Because it's only rising in British pound terms. Yeah, okay. Or US that's, dollar terms. Yeah, there you go. So it could go to infinity because that, because when they're inversely correlated, the weaker the dollar or the pound goes, the higher the cryptocurrency would go, like a Bitcoin or a or a Monero would, so would it not change the game we're going really deep down the crypto rabbit hole yet would it not change the game if you could start then purchasing things in Bitcoin a lot of people do though yeah the, it, it's kind of a regulator's nightmare but it, it is in, in essence the free market taking over um, the money supply because you have competition in so many different areas and I think most people would agree competition is good that's why when you go to the supermarket you can see so many different brands and you can see them mm -hmm. competing for market value but what you've never had in um, the monetary space is competition because once you have a legal tender law that basically banishes all other rivals mm -hmm. and whatever we, you know the few things we do know when it comes to economics is monopolies are never seen as a good thing because once there's a monopoly they can I guess abuse the power they have Yeah, and the abuse of that power now would be tin of tuna used to be 70p when I started my gym days and it's probably two pounds now I remember it doubled in a year but yeah. that could be a supply thing but I'm just saying it, you, you start to see I'm sure everyone will have a story of a, of a grandparent or a parent saying how they got on the property ladder at such a young age and oh you know it was yeah, 2,000 pounds 20 grand or something what yeah. about Freddo's yeah Freddo's Freddo. the classic example oh, they're no longer not only are they getting more expensive they're well, getting they're, smaller we've oh, just continued now Freddo's well that would be shrinkflation <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> different ball game Joshy uh, so, um, is Freddo's gone I don't know if they're gone. I don't, I don't know either. I can't imagine. They, they're a staple, right? They're, they're, they're like pound like. 50 now, so they're all 5p <laughs> back in the day. Mm. They were, uh, yeah. 10p was the price I remember. 10p. 5p, I remember. But has the Freddo changed though, Harry? Was it that or the measuring stick? 
I guess to, to bring um, back to the what, what to is economic the, is really a, <laughs> what is the correct answer it's the measuring stick isn't it it is the measuring stick well done no. thank you I think uh, we should uh, we've taught we've taught crypto into the ground there alright that is thoughts on crypto did you guys have any thoughts on crypto <laughs> <laughs> um oh all right this will uh all right next question uh who wins in a fight a gorilla or grizzly <laughs> harry i believe this is your domain um yeah actually yeah this is no no domain. because you talk about this all the time well no i talk about <laughs> the fact that you'd be a german shepherd no i don't know i actually I, re- I redacted that when, okay. when when jay came on um, <laughs> um a, gr- a, gr- a grizzly would win grizzly would win definitely it's too big yeah, yeah. I look mate, when I saw that question come through. I actually googled gorillas are the strong weight, though. right? Apparently, a big grizzly can be three hundred and fifty kilos. Whereas you're talking with the gorilla, you're talking like two twenty. It's a big oh, difference. Still big, isn't they? Is it? That's like yeah, but it's like Khabib fighting in Garnet. Like that's a big gap. Yeah, because as with David Khabib. Hay says, uh, you know. No, David Hay didn't say. So it, it was said about that fight was that a good big man always beats a good little man. And David Hayes, he would he would butt that trend. And he didn't. He lost Klitschko, just as the gorilla would lose to a grizzly. But the thing is, though, a gorilla does have mad. You Strength. see it, and and an aggressive nature. Mm. Yeah. Well, be interesting. Grizzlies are pretty I'd aggressive. Pay for that fight, to watch that fight. Yeah. Pay but how would you actually? Do you think they just sort of? I don't think you'd have to put someone on the line for them to fight. Yeah, I don't think they'd engage. Would they like? They naturally? wouldn't know what to do with each other, would they? They're from yeah. totally different, you know, ecosystems. Mm. One's a king, or not a king of the jungle. One, you know, he's. One of the certainly the head honchos in the jungle, the other one lives in the woods. Yeah. Well, if anyone has any footage of it, email it into. I don't think yeah. you <laughs> tag in the comments. Maybe some dark website. Um, <laughs> it's kind of kind of reverting a little bit back to uh, lockdown and habits. Was there anything you developed through lockdown? What habit wise? Yeah, just any any habits developed through lockdown. Yeah, I've completely changed so many things through lockdown. I got my routine down now, morning, get up, 750 mils of water filtered, of course. On the head. Half lemon. Full, uh, What's the lemon doing there? Vit, vit C, mate. Bit of Vit C vit in the C. morning. Immunity, as we're getting into these colder, this colder weather. Mm. Uh, Grammar rock salt. 20 mm. minute walk. Get my, that sun exposure on the eyes, on the skin. Wake myself up. Uh, and then I just come back, do like 10, 15 minutes of breath work. But the thing on the habits more than anything which I've learned through lockdown is don't become overly obsessed with your habits which is what I did and I, they almost became stressful like suffocating having yeah, so much things around you I get into the evening like finish a hard day at work and be like right I gotta meditate for 20 minutes and do my breath work and then I'm reading for 10, 10 pages yeah, and, okay. blah, blah, blah. and it just came too much so I just learned to chill out on my, my do things. what you feel mm. do what you feel yeah but it's sort of a loose structure um, you got the you got your early wake up times down, didn't you? Where's Watson? I did for a wee while, yeah. Uh, half five. Uh, if I needed to go to the shops, beat all the uh, all those long queues, and then maybe six. I actually just my routine was just get up. I'd watch the sunrise, uh, have a coffee, and I normally speak to family back home. That was my morning. And obviously, they always say you win the morning, you win the day. Yeah, no, I agree. So, you know, who would disagree with that? Who who would I don't know, uh, did, Harry? No, it was a cool. I, I the first initial period was quite quite cool because everything just kind of seemed to slow down a little bit, right? And mm. uh, and yeah, you, you, I'd I say that was the, the one I was with you because me and you was we were both doing yeah. the early wake up. Yeah, and it was because you didn't have to worry about all the other stuff flooding mm-hmm. your time. It was time to just you could like really nail it down. Probably the, the diet stuff as well more. And fasting actually as well. I, I put in some like real decent like long fasts, which mm. I hadn't really done before. I didn't really understand. It. And I spoke to you, I remember, and kind of got the inside or got some a different take on it a little bit, and did it. Just just sort of tried things and um, kind of found out it worked for me and stuff. And yeah, how long did you do some of those fasts? For the long as eight I did, hours, was, I think, about <laughs> eight to ten hours, about <laughs> four hours. <laughs> no, the longest I did was. I remember because it was two. It was two nights, so I had an evening meal, and then I went to bed, and then I had another night sleep, and then I had breakfast. So it's like, what's that? Like thirty six? I think nice. it'd been that. That'd have been the most. Yeah. You feel good doing it. Cause I remember hungry. I watched Tim do a video, and he said you only properly fast when you do two nights sleep on a on an empty stomach. 
Well, he would Otherwise, know. Otherwise, you're faking. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll I'll try that. And I tried it. My but they always say you're not hungry, but I was starving hungry when I woke up. No, I think what could you eat, Harry? I could have ate a scabby horse. I could have <laughs> eaten a scabby horse. <laughs> <laughs> But I've heard, everyone I've heard that's done it, it says that like first 48 hours is no yeah the first 48 or so hours is like hard but then once you you reach a point where like you you then chill out your body I think your metabolism just drops like you must by that point you'll have burnt through all your glycogen stores your body will switch over to ketones it's burning that fat mm. um, and then it's like and muscle because yeah and muscle Alf, because Alfie's done uh one of our friends who hopefully will get on here at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's done like a few week fasts and then obviously... Week? Tim, yeah, he does, he's done a few, like, I'd say two two or three, like, week-long fasts and then obviously Tim did one which was 30 days, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Was Alfie's a wet fast or a dry fast? I don't know. You'll have to ask him. <laughs> Must have been wet. I would assume it was That means wet, you're yeah. drinking water, Alex. I'll assume that. Did any fasting, Alex? Uh, besides every night when I sleep yeah besides that yeah yeah I did actually uh, a couple 24 hour 24 hour goes at it um, I'd like to do more of it I kind of I do I actually did one the other week because I felt really sluggish throughout the training week yeah and so we have a day off and I I just kind of felt post fast I always had uh, increase a little uptick in energy so I did do one recently 24 hour fast I don't I don't know if that does anything but maybe just not eating for 24 hours just and I think it I think it definitely does it's, it's uh so we've really gone away from like what? you know we just it's no it's never like spoken about oh, people yeah, ever yeah. speak about it was, was you know people are doing Ramadan and stuff like that yeah well it's it's, co- it's coming quite big in like the health scene now because it's like the, basically the term is autopathy like a regulated cell death so oh, basically yeah. when you're your body's not processing food it starts to you know clear out damaged cells and um and that starts to happen around about the 16 hour mark so if you did a 24 hour fast you would have had a good eight hours of autopathy going on lovely what um how are we looking at for time joshy what's we're that? on 56 minutes now we're on the we're on the, cool. we're on the, on the home, home stretch, stretch. Yeah. a few of these are quite quick quick fire ones evening go to mill Surely you got to say about your the concoction you're making, the pre-bed like. Sleep oh well, concoction. right, yeah. I'm gonna write my pre-bed concoction. Now this is what it is, right? You get yourself some some milk, preferably raw, but it's hard to get hold of. So I went to a farm the other day, Crab Hayes Farm, Broadclist. Shout out if you're listening. Uh, I doubt that you are. There was no raw milk available. Um, but you can't. What's the rule? You can't sell it or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. No, but they, no, they, no, no, you can sell it if you, the farms can sell it from oh, the farm. It's not like on a black market, they advertise <laughs> it on the, wet, on the internet. I thought, like you, not, I thought you were dropping the internet. No, no, sorry, yeah, not, it wasn't that farm I went to. Um, <laughs> um, but it was unavailable, so I went and got some, whatever, as, as close as you can get to it. Oh, right, warm milk. Warm milk, you warm that up. I got some magnesium oats, and I put some reishi, ape nutrition obviously, organic grown, a few drops of CBD in there, and then I have that with some zinc. And you will sleep like a baby, I, and that's uh, yeah. I was considering making a reel of it, and then I bottled it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, that would be a good reel. I would do uh, rival the Liver Kings. Testicles yeah, exactly. The Liver Kings eating testicles. I'm there drinking warm milk like a little cat before I go to sleep. <laughs> would um, did you didn't you mention one indoors before? What was your yeah? My my current go to is uh, 100 grams white Sorry, rice. And then chicken thighs and uh, <laughs> how adventurous of you, yeah. Josh? <laughs> <laughs> broth and clean. bone broth, and fish yeah. and a rice cake, bone broth. In Goes with to the, show you, do, you don't so need a good, home man. run. Nothing too exotic there, mate. It's so chicken. chicken and rice still on that bodybuilding diet, mate. Well, <laughs> apart from the skin on, the skin's on now. You've come Boiled full circle. Chicken. I've truly come full circle <laughs> yeah. out of the top of it, mate. It works. It, works. it does. A, does wonders. Helps me. I sleep like a baby. I Any that. greens with that, Joshy? Greens. Any greens with that, Josh? No anti nutrients in there, mm. mate. Easy oh. to digest. That's the that's the goal. What um, about you, uh, Al? Uh, I don't really uh, don't know. I had a sandwich before. Probably won't eat much more. But uh, in terms of dinner, what's my go to? Uh, well, actually, I said it inside. I have mince, um, organic. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, there's actually a cool little farm shop. I think they say it is. I don't know if it is. Was Tastes that from good. what? Ben's Farm Shop. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, good shop. I've mints, bit of liver, couple eggs, gives it a bit of colour, drop a couple pine nuts in there. Nice. Smother it in ketchup and mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> nice that, that 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 palm oil, just and to then, really in, uh, inflame the gut line yeah. naturally, and then <laughs> sends you on your way. Um, <clears throat> next one we got sixteen. Uh, how many oak trees in an acorn? Uh, Mate, I, so I, I I don't know whether this this question uh, is supposed to be some sort of trick, but I feel like there's one oak tree in an acorn. Right? I think that as well. Harry, you got anything on that? How many oak trees in an acorn? Yeah. Just one, yeah. Okay. Surely, you, if you plant it, it will grow into yeah. an oak tree. Is that is that what it means? I, I think so, mate. You yeah. can't grow two oak trees, or can you? No, I, well, I don't know. My guess would be no. But the trees have a network of roots under the surface that we trees never do even have see. roots. That is confirmed. But you know what's mad as well? Yeah, but that they communicate with each other under the ground. Have you ever seen the OA? I've seen Avatar, mate. I tell you, if you want, they do that in Avatar. <laughs> yeah. They do do that now. Avatar yeah. 2 coming out soon, by the way. Yeah, that's going to be a banger. <laughs> Mate, what I was going to say, what is mad is the thought that something can fit in the palm of your hand. Oak tree, the biggest oak tree, over 200 foot tall. I think I heard <laughs> someone say it. That's crazy, mate. From the palm of your hand to 200 foot tall. Well, there's a real nice book called The Man Who Plants Trees, which is a lot about uh, acorns and stuff like that. Yeah. Do 50 you, pager, you could read it. Do you think... No, as in you, you could read it if you like to. Read it. <laughs> you nincompoops can you, read that. Uh, I think you got the capability. Do you re, uh, Do you think that trees can talk to each other? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, they've done studies where they've shown, say, like a plant, uh, an animal's coming along and it's eating, uh, like whatever off a plant. Yeah. Then it sends. It can send signals down to other areas of plant, which then release smells to. Uh, distract like to put the animal off basically mm. so yeah they're in they're in communication and when you took you want to watch there's a documentary on Netflix called Fantastic Fungi by Paul Stamets who's like the world's mushroom expert and some of the stuff that he some of the experiments he's doing is uh, honestly bonkers he on that documentary right he's created he's found this fungi so basically there's this these ants the all these like uh, mites that infect people's homes yeah and they have at their wherever their colony is they have a couple of or like a few at all the entrances they have these like um soldier mites at the entrance right and this fungi can infect them so all the little worker mites go off throughout the day and do their thing and then when they come back to the hive or whatever you call it at the end of the day colony the colony these guard mites assess whether they've picked up this fungi and if they've picked up the fun the fungi, they carry them off to a little graveyard by the side of the land, decapitate them, and then kill themselves. Right? Because if if the uh, if the mite gets into the colony with the fungi on it, it infects the hole and it'll kill the queen. Well, so it's an evil fungi. Yeah, so the, the fungi, yeah, kills them. But well, it depends which way you look at it. If you've got a mite infestation in your home, that fungi is your saving grace. But how how often is the fungi effective? Well, so it's not because they've got this the, system. They've got this system. Well, the, the system's killer. airtight. But, but Paul Stamets has managed to modify this fungi slightly. So, although it'll still cut, kill off the colony, but it's no longer recognised by the soldier mites. It's pretty cool. He's patented it. It's like you know. You can, I thought you can't patent natural thing. Oh, he's modified it. Though. Yeah, he's modified oh, it. Okay. Yeah, so he's patented. That sounds like that film uh, Ants. Yeah, yeah it's a brilliant film. Yeah, it's a good, really good film it's actually. Sylvester yeah. Stallone's in that one as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's the he's one the, of the soldiers. He's the Jack. Dan. No, he's mm. called Weezer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we? Should we? Just because uh, that was just supposed to be a quick one, I'd imagine the how many oak trees in it. <laughs> okay, there's a uh, practices to tune out and relax after a busy day help to improve sleep and de decrease stress you know I mean? I've been sleeping pretty well recently I could probably go on you start off with that warm milk drink I was okay. just telling you about <laughs> and then once you've how much are you selling that for what? <laughs> you can have that one that's the that's the people's drink yeah. you have the people's drink and then I would say and it's a and it's a real basic point is just try and get off the screens and if you are going to watch the screens just get them glasses with the orange the blue lenses blu-rays yeah the blu-rays um and and also, if it's cold, get a cold room 
and then have a hot shower and then dry off and get into bed naked. That's how you do it. Cold room's key for sure. Yeah, cold yeah, room cold is absolutely room key. key. Yeah. I think dim the lights, massive one. To yeah, try, yeah, and, yeah. try and stay in, in... Oh, actually, I've, I learned a new one this week. So apparently... So when you... We talked earlier about the morning routine, right? Exposing your sunlight, your eyes to sunlight mm. first thing in the morning. That's it. It gives you... So you get you have a natural cortisol strike spike in the morning around 7 a.m. This isn't the... That's apparently why you get boners, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, well, I don't, I don't actually know that. It's, it's so probably, didn't you say that to me? Well, yeah, what James said. Who said it? Was it? It yeah, came did, from yeah. someone. Okay, well, yeah. If James said it, I'm sure it's, it's sure it's bang on the money. Um, well, well, he he watches these. So James, comment in the comment in the uh, comment section and let us know if that's fake news. If you or got not. past the acorn and you're still tuning in, <laughs> <Yeah>. comment. <laughs> if that's true. This long, but yeah. Anyway, basically exposing your eyes to the sunset also helps with like melatonin release in the evening, uh, which helps you sleep. So that's another good one. Mm. But yeah, dim the lights. Don't overdo it on your phone cool room like Harry said it's a good one and if you're looking for extra bits and pieces meditation is always great there's an app called the Insight Timer it's amazing breath works brilliant app called State they've got specific sleep breath work sessions as well, All right. which is good uh, I think this is more <laughs> to actually you Harry are you single? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no <laughs> No, I uh, I have a girlfriend. Okay, Steve. Is that, was that <laughs> Steve? <laughs> Steve from Honiton is going to be a bit disappointed with that. Hey, we need total anonymity with these uh, <laughs> these questions, there, Alec. <laughs> that is a, a real old joke you just told. Us. He's reheated that many. That's gone out of the microwave many times and back in there. It's been nuked to all its nutrients. <laughs> that joke. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's carry on then shall we yes. okay uh, uh on a more lighter note how do you find meaning and purpose in life keep you know we've only got a short 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so try not to drag this one out. um how do you find meaning and purpose? I think we kind of life? covered this. Yeah, 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 I'd say, I'd say yeah, that's kind of the dream. Good yeah, question, though. Good question. Yeah, I do. We'd say revert back to question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was just before thoughts of crypto. <laughs> <laughs> that one just really sticking out in your mind. If you yeah. go back to it, <laughs> <make the> <laughs> we won't. Not just yet, Harry. The, you okay? Well, and Josh actually. Oh, maybe all three of us. Uh, how to, how <laughs> to manage <laughs> brain damage and concussions? Um, I'd, I'd say first, you put your head the right side of the tackle. Put your head the right side of the tackle. Um, if you are feeling ropey, it is not macho to carry on. I actually, when people feel pressure to do that kind of thing, and it's actually a, they are getting away from it now, but it's a negative aspect of the sport or was. Yeah, is sort of making people soldier. So pride on. then that kind of vibe. Yeah, pride. Like it's not. And for me, I was always saying it's like head and neck are just like no nos. Like no all the other stuff, like yeah, crack on and you know do your thing. But when I, I feel like I love Nate and Nick Diaz, don't get me wrong. When I see them, a little, a little bit of me is like fuck, man. Yeah. Like they, they look like they're in like the hurt locker, like a little bit. Like I kind of wouldn't mind seeing the world through their eyes because it seems like Would you at say times, it to their face. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just fan girl, the pair of. Them. <laughs> um, uh-huh. But yeah, yeah, I agree with that. In terms of the um, head and neck, is just pretty, pretty serious stuff. Um, In terms of like nutritional, there's, there's, we did like a whole episode on it. So yeah, I think it's like episode three or five about the high, high fat medicinal keto, of course. Yeah, how you can use a ketogenic diet to help recover from brain injury, and it's, there's, it's quite promising research on that. So if you're interested in that bit, I won't bore you with it now, but dive into that episode because we touch on it in quite a lot of detail which episode was that it's either three or five I'll link it in the show notes Uh, and then last two Uh, if you go back any time in history when would you go back to and why I would go back to and be listen carefully to what I say here (laughs) to when the pyramids were built when so I don't you're not saying Egypt ancient Egypt you're saying when they were built yes okay is that clear because I don't know it's clear yeah it's clear because I don't know when they were built. This is my point. I don't. I, I can't. You'd like to wrap my head around the 
thought of them being built by like the, you know the, that logs image of like carpet. logs and ropes and loads of people I watched the program on this right the, and you know the big pyramid at Giza mm. it's you know, the Great looks, Pyramid. The Great Pyramid. You mm. know, it looks like it's four-sided, right? It's six, I believe. It's eight-sided. Oh, shit. Each it's side eight. is built on a slight angle, and they had the guy who built, not uh, London Bridge, but, you know, what's the other bridge Tower in London? Bridge. Is it Tower Bridge? The other one? It's on Harry Potter. It's the one that, like, gets mangled on Harry Potter. Oh. It's like famous. It's like a feat of architecture in London. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it's called. But they've got the guy that built that, and he's, like, an English guy, and he's talking about how amazing the great pyramid is like in terms of how precise the engineering would have to be for it to have those eight sides and the reason points true north as well doesn't it points true north and if you look at the car how some of the stuff's carved there's like perfect holes in there i just i would love to bear witness to that happening right. joshy we've sent him back to ancient egypt ari h <sighs> that year seven disco <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. When would it? I would. I would. I, I, I'm going to say a different answer. The, the the pyramid is also pretty high up on my to do list. Yeah. If I could have a couple, if I had a car like just the uh, one, that, yeah, just the one. Um, the DeLorean is what you're looking for, I think. Not the DeLoreans. No, mine would be <laughs> that was the car. I'm gonna, but here's the thing. Imagine I said I want to go back to dinosaurs, and there were no dinosaurs. So I'm just back in this. Well, they'll probably put you in the museum, and you can. Just yeah, I'm just in the, the museum. Look at this skeleton I've already seen. If it's real, um, dinosaurs. Yeah, they probably are real. Now I'm gonna go back to the city of Atlantis. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a good okay. one. The city of Atlantis. Is yeah, what I'm going yeah. back. Whatever was called the city of Atlantis, or the Empire of Atlantis, when it was there, that's what I'm going back to. Yeah, yeah. and what I imagine is a huge floating city upon the sea where little kids are taking classes and they're bending spoons like the Matrix, and there's like a big rocket check out- ship. You need to check out the Eye of Egypt because the the <laughs> recock uh, or whatever it is, I believe that's where they think it was, the Eye of Egypt. The Eye of Egypt. Yeah, it's called the uh, recock structure. Check it out. What about you, Al? Probably for me, uh, probably a little more complex than used to. Probably the nineteen nineties. <laughs> just just <laughs> catch a Chicago Bulls game. <laughs> Maybe take some shoes if they need a like a sixth player. But I, I genuinely think the, the '90s would be incredible, um, just because you'd you'd have. I thought you were joking. No, 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 he's not. I, 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 I he love, really isn't joking. I just no. want a coke yeah. out of a bottle. I'd, I'd love to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be my age during the '90s. You have internet without social media. You have phones without internet. And when you when you look at anything from the '90s, everybody is because you talked about present. Yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. is at the game it's watching the point. sport. It's a great point. football, yeah, yeah. rugby. Oh, rugby didn't even really exist. At football, basketball, all these different sports. Whenever you see flashbacks, they're all watching. Nowadays, everyone's obviously preoccupied with other things. Rave culture was on the rise, and, and all the party culture was on the rise. Sick yeah. bands, yeah, the sick sport teams. So, I think sports I, personalities yeah. is actually. Yeah. It's not Atlantis uh, you or, know what, or, or will, the Great Pyramid, but it's quite sick. I will also <laughs> just caveat it with another thing. The world, it was a little bit bigger. You know, you, there was a lot more anonymity. There was a lot more sort of um, fate. You know, you, you couldn't organise things as you went out. You know, you just had to have a good time. Oh, yeah, I want to go back to a place where I could be more anonymous. That's just that's your main, <laughs> that's your number one priority. No, go the world's just I a need little, more anonymity. Just, just a no, little I'm, bit I'm, really, I'm just, hey, I'm no. busting your shops. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I'm getting harassed by all 400 followers on uh, Instagram. <laughs> I, I can't step outside my front door. I am packed. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually think mine was probably Trump's yours, but that's just me. No, you know, it's all about opinion, brother. Uh, and the last one. Um, These questions. Top three dinner guests and why? See you soon, Mary. Top three. Top three yours dinner truly. guests. Yours truly. It's a big question. Who do you want us to this grill? Is a whole, this is basically a whole, this is like a whole other podcast in itself, I'd say. Oh, first of all, Dead, dead or alive, or, or a combination. Well, I think Izzy wrote it, so <laughs> I don't know. Did she write it? Yeah, it was Izzy's question. Yeah, she <laughs> wanted to put me in. She just wanted to see if you'd pick her. 
I'm, 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 I can go. I've got, I've got mine. Who are they? Is it I, Paul Check? Yeah, I would have Paul Check. Yeah, I've got to meet him. <laughs> I want to meet Paul Check. I'd like, I'd really like to meet Joe Rogan in in person. I think they would be like that interaction would be comical as well. And um, maybe Dorian Yates, big Dorian Yates. Saw him at the Arnold Classic all, the other day. All, actually. all the other option is you just go hi. full. Uh, you could go. Sam Tripoli, uh, Eddie Bravo, and uh, Alex, Jones. Alex Jones. Yeah, bit of fireworks. Yeah, then yeah. it would just be you, you good times. I'm going Genghis Khan, <laughs> Tutankhamun, <laughs> and you don't speak my, any my old, my old man, well, my dad. You don't speak that language, though. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd have a translator. <laughs> Mate, I think Genghis Khan like one of the most evil <laughs> men ever to walk the planet. No, or, what I mean putting is putting yours and your dad's life at risk. So, no, what I mean is I wouldn't mind just seeing. I want. I'd want. I wouldn't. I'd want to see someone that's so different to what I've seen before in my life. That's what I'd be. Yeah. And I want to. I want to ask my dad to go with me just to, <laughs> to have to share the experience. Yeah, fair but enough. Get, no, someone else. Or one of the great pharaohs that are in the hieroglyphics that are written as drawn as big giants. And I'd like to see if they actually are big giants mm. in the king's chamber. Mm. What yeah, are you, Al? Quite. I don't know, I've been sitting here thinking I haven't really got through. Um, top three, eh? Uh, Thomas Sewell, if you know who he is. Yes, very uh, I, economist, is he? Yeah. I, or an economic yeah. commentator. I don't know. So many, like Josh said, there's so many different ways you could cut it. Is that Thomas no. Schill? Like that? No, it's not. Blasphemy. <laughs> don't ever say it like that. No, um, I don't know. It depends what, sure. depends what kind of <laughs> evening you're after, you know? Well, it's your evening, mate. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> good point, really. I'd uh, be down Nando's of mine. Would Genghis, you? <laughs> Genghis and Toot. <laughs> Genghis and Toot. We all just order it and just make, make, take, take, make off. Do you know what I mean? You've all already bought. Um, I really, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I'd like to meet maybe some of my old family so maybe like a grandparent or like a great great grandparent yeah, or something good. just to uh, see see what they're like you know Fair. see, so see where I'll spawn great great granddad and no, third, I probably, third I probably won't have Thomas Saul there when, when meeting all my family he'd be for like a separate one where it's just like hey man let's let's chat you know just you and him like, is it I don't know Peter Schill and, uh, and Pamela Jeff Anderson <laughs> Hammer Anderson in there as well. she might join us. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Is that'll that round it? up. Is that at all? We're done. I think that that's it. That's it. it did you? Did I ask you if you're single? We're yeah, you were <laughs> <laughs> we're at hour and seventeen as well. So let's wrap it up for one twenty. Harry, where can uh, people find you? Harry Dot Williams ninety one Instagram uh, for your fairly regular content. Josh. What about you, Alec? You go. I'm currently deactivated, so nowhere really. But if, Sandy Park, if by Saturday. The, if, by the, <laughs> Sandy Park, if by the time this is, I know, surfacing, I might be online and it's just, you can link it in the description. Yeah, right, I forgot it. I think it's just Alec Hepburn, is it? Yeah, I think yeah it's it not a common name. It's, it's yeah. Just, yeah, I think I got away with this. Uh, mine's ape underscore nutrition on Instagram. Website's apenutrition.co.uk. We've got the beef testicles and also digestive Oof. organ complex out tomorrow, which will be out by the time this launches. So and Tic Tacs. <laughs> get after it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers, thank Cheers. you. Thank you, thank you.